Welcome to this episode of YouTube where we have some footage that was filmed from inside the window and uh, uh, on Monday we decided that the snow load on the roof was a little bit too extreme so we had the roof shoveled off and that left a lot of snow in the front of the wolf exhibit and we needed to shovel that away from the edge of the eaves so that the wolves couldn't jump on the roof and that left a little pile of snow for the wolves to entertain themselves with and here you see Aiden and Denali uh, chewing on a leftover deer carcass from Saturday night's feeding and Maya coming over to give a little defense and you're actually seeing the wolves kind of watching the roof crew and uh, that's a little bit of stimulus for them and you can see pretty good uh, associative tail wag there's Grizzer again with that wound um, still on the side of his head healing up but slow to heal in this cold weather uh, but overall we you know continue to see some anxiety from Grizzer towards Aiden not so much for, um, towards Denali. I think uh, Denali's uh, stopped testing or limited his testing, and Aiden is getting a lot of confidence and continuing to show a lot of confidence and certainly getting his fair share of food. Um, every time we see Aiden um, in these clips, he's been feeding, so that's a good thing for Aiden. Uh, again, we got to watch the negative response that it might have towards Grizzer. But certainly we want to make sure that Grizzer feels comfortable in the exhibit and this is going to take some time to work out and part of it is seasonal and even though the temperatures right now are still again below zero um, in the evenings and uh, tonight we're predicting 20 below the reality is uh, the spring warm weather is going to certainly calm things but you do see Aiden in a high tail response or a T2 tail response sometimes a T1 and doing his own fair share of marking but overall I think things are calmer than they've been uh, and certainly getting a little more play behavior which is really good and you'll see Aiden kind of chase after a few ravens and then join the rest of the pack on a patrol up on top of the enclosure and that is something that we are seeing more often is the whole pack as a group going up and interacting or or doing what they need to do at the top of the enclosure whether that be marking whether that just be walking the fence line and that's something that we didn't see for a long time. Denali and Grizzer, um, when they had their conflict, Denali would stay down on the bottom. And uh, Aiden, for, for, you know, since he's been a young adult, um, has been pretty reserved about coming to the top of the enclosure with a pack. And that's certainly changed this winter. So, as we said, that's something that we're, uh, we're monitoring and, and certainly keeping an eye on. And uh, we'll, we'll continue to try to help Grizzer gain some courage. And we do that basically by giving him attention, making sure that he's got some focus on feeding. If we can, we can maybe hold uh, Aiden in the medical pen for a bit uh, and maybe give Grizzer a break from him. Aiden's been doing a little bit of growling and dominance of some of the beds, which has also um, caused certainly a, a change in behavior. But Maya seems to put an end to that fairly quickly, so that's not something that Grizzer has to concern himself with. And you just saw Denali do a, uh, basically a scoot on top of that straw. And a scoot is different than a scrape. A scrape is when they scrape the ground after they urinate to broadcast their scent. A scoot is when they drag their anal scent glands across an object. Uh, usually it's snow, sometimes it's grass. In this case, a straw that maybe there's a block scent gland. Or it can be indicative of parasites, although we do a fecal check on the, these wolves regularly, so we don't have and haven't had any parasites to record, uh, but it is something that we'll document and see how many scoots there are. And you just basically saw Aiden there do a mark and Maya do an overmark and Denali is going to come and do a mark. And what's interesting is that Grizzer doesn't. Uh, after the other three mark, Grizzer investigates it but chooses not to do an overmark and that's again another sign of kind of waning confidence. And these things can come and go. As we've said, we've seen some confidence issues, but um, there was a quick look there where Aiden was in the picture and Grizzer dropped his head, dropped his tail, and kind of turned and ran. Uh, so we do know that it's focused towards Aiden and not really anybody else. The other thing that we've been observing is that Grizzer and Maya have been spending a fair amount of time together on the straw dens. And that's by Grizzer's choice. Maya will lay down and Grizzer will go join her, and that's probably his security as well. 
So back in retirement, um, we've had a busy week, and so we didn't have a lot of time to film the retire, retired wolves during the day, so we chose another evening session. And Shadow really likes these evening sessions. He gets pretty excited about them. Um, again, greeting the camera, coming up um, close to the camera. One of the questions that I was asked recently was, how do you tell the difference between Malik and Shadow on the exhibit? And it is difficult, even when we're working with them. But one thing that we do now is, body-wise, Malik is a much thinner frame, um, thinner muzzle, uh, just a, a lot more um, uh, f uh, thinner physique than Shadow is. Shadow's got a big blocky head, um, a broad, broad muzzle, where Malik's muzzle is pretty thin. The other thing to look for, uh, again, there's always that characteristic scar on Malik's face uh, that's been going on all winter, that abscess tooth, but that's drying up, and so we don't see that. And you just saw a shadow do a little bit of a chase, and that's probably because of the stimulus of the camera. Um, if you look at Shadow's face, if you look at Shadow's face, Shadow's eyes are a little bit more roundish, whereas Malik's are a little bit more almond shaped. So that's some way that we, I can tell them from photos actually. There's sometimes when it's a close up and I can't tell the difference, I look for those almond shaped versus roundish eyes. The other thing is if there's a wolf on top of the den and a wolf inside the den, chances are the inside wolf is Shadow and the wolf on top is Malik. So again, here's a glimpse of those almond-shaped eyes that is characteristic of Malik. The other thing is you may be able to see that colic, uh, raised hair in the middle of his nose. That's another ID that we use uh, when we're looking at Malik in a, in a photo. Again, in video, it's a little bit tough. So we'll definitely look for that thinner body frame, narrower head, and possibly a little less uh, um, animated or a little more reserved. That's fairly typical. Shadow is a pretty animated wolf. Interacts a lot with uh, the staff that are going in. Uh, very, very social and he's pretty uh, aware of what's going on in the other pack. So he tends to be towards the front quite a bit more. He will always be the one who stimulates the howling uh, more than Malik does. So hopefully that helps. And again, thanks for watching. We um, hope to uh, get a little bit more time as the spring progresses to get some daylight footage. As we get longer daylight, that should uh, occur. But it's kind of fun doing the nighttime footage, and certainly the wolves, it's good stimulus for them. But overall, the pack dynamics are maintaining themselves. Um, Grizzer will continue to uh, work on his confidence and see if we can try to improve his attitude a little bit. Maya continues to be... Uh, up to no good, hiding behind snowbanks and keeping everybody in line. But overall, the pack's doing well. So thanks for watching.